Today we're going to be looking at Psalm 81. We are the Prophetic Word of Code of Arms Ministry, the Reformed Pentecostal Anglo-Saxon and Royal Empire of the Kingdom of God denomination. Our Sunday worship service is 11 a.m. Our Thursday night Bible study is 7 p.m. My name is Chaplain Bishop Archduke Dr. Robert L. Maxwell, the Prophetic Royal Coat of Arms Ministry, Duke of Pomeranian and Livonia, Colonel of the Royal Guard of Pomeranian and Livonia, Field Marshal of the Prophetic Royal Coat of Arms Ministry and of the House of Hans Olin, Knight of the Sacred and Military Order of Merits of the Prophetic Royal Coat of Arms Ministry, Scott of the House of Hans Olin. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, ask you to bless and anoint this message, and let it be a word that someone needs to hear, that there be such revelation and transformation, move us into the apostolic and the prophetic. Get us wisdom, Karen, in the subject. Make my preaching and teaching acceptable to you, Father God. We ask and pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Without further ado, let us turn over to Psalm 81, and we will be using the contemporary English today. This is going to be a light but important message. So, anyways, we spend uh, so much time filling our heads for with a lot of negative thoughts. We pay attention to news, and it is nothing but negativeness. Negativeness in your life, a little bitter on your daily struggles, so on, even bitter by what goes on and is taking place, the injustices that were taking, that they're taking place. That stuff is, of course, important. But one thing we need to do is to step back reflect, meditate, and give God praise and glory for all the positive things that he has done in your life, the victories and the 
liberation, restoration, renewal in your life, giving you victories after victories. And we should pay attention to the positive things of life, positive news stories, positive things in life. And so, if you will, turn over to Psalm 81. Heavenly Father, O Almighty God, we pray hail to thee, Invictus Crown, ruler of the fatherland of the elect. Hail to thee, Emperor Jesus Christ. Feel in the thrones splendor the high ecstasy and fall to be darling of thy people. Hail to thee, Emperor Jesus Christ. Neither steed nor mounted knight secure towering height, where princes stand, love of the fatherland of the elect, love of the free man. Create the ruler's throne like crags at sea. Holy flame, glow, glow and expire not for the fatherland of the elect. Then we all stand valiant for one man and God Kaiser slash priest slash prophet, mediator and grand bishop, Jesus Christ our savior gladly fighting and bleeding for throne and empire. Commerce and science hoist with courage and strength their chief aloft. Warriors and heroes deeds find their laurel leaves faithfully preserved upon thy throne. Forever continuing to bloom our flag may wave boldly on the high seas. Ha! How proud and majestic casts over land and sea widely the German eagle and the lion of Judah, the star of David and the Christian flag its flaming gaze. B. Emperor Wilhelm and Kaiser Jesus Christ, hear thy people's ornament for many a year humanity's pride. Feel in the throne's splendor, the high ecstasy in full to be darling of thy people. Hail to thee, Emperor, Priest and Prophet and Mediator Jesus Christ. Germany and the Anglo-Saxon Jewish Universal Empire of Israel Germany and God's Empire above all things, above everything in the world, when for protection and defense, it always stands brotherly together. From the muse to the memel, from the adage to the belt, vertical bar, Germany, Germany and the empire of Israel above all things, above everything in the world. Skeptical. German women and God's elect women, German and God's elect loyalty. German wine and the Anglo-Saxon Jewish empire of Israel wine and German song and the Anglo-Saxon Jewish Empire of Israel song shall return in the world their old beautiful chime and inspire us to noble deeds during all of our life vertical bar German women and God's elect women German and the Anglo-Saxon Jewish Universal Empire of Israel loyalty German wine and the Anglo-Saxon Jewish Universal Empire of Israel wine and German song and the Anglo-Saxon Jewish Universal Empire of Israel God's Empire song. Unity and justice and freedom for the German and elect's fatherland. Let us all strive for this purpose. Brotherly and sisterly with heart and hand. Unity and justice and freedom are the pledge of happiness. Vertical bar. Bloom in the glow of happiness. Bloom, German and the elects and the very elects fatherland. The cry resounds like thunders peal. Like crashing waves and clang of steel. The Rhine, the Rhine, our German and the elect and the very elect Rhine. Who will defend our stream, divine? Dear fatherland of the elect and very elect, no fear be thine. Dear Fatherland of the Anglo-Saxon Jewish Universal Empire of Israel, no fear be thine. Firm and true stands the watch, the watch at the Rhine. Firm and true stands the watch, the watch at the Rhine. They stand, a hundred thousand strong, quick to avenge their country's wrong. With filial love their bosoms swell. They shall guard the sacred landmark well. He casts his eyes to heaven's blue, from where past heroes hold the view, and swears pugnaciously the oath. You rhyme and I.
next day, German and the Anglo-Saxon Jewish Universal Empire of Israel, God's Empire, both. While still remains one breath of life. While still one fist can draw a knife. One gun still fired with one hand. No foe will stand on this Rhine sand. Should my heart not survive this stand, you will never fall in foreign hand. Much as your waters with no end. Have we our hero's blood to spend? The oath resumes, unrolls the wave. The banners fly high, proud and brave. The Rhine, the Rhine, the German and the Anglo-Saxon Jewish Universal Empire of Israel, the sixth and eighth day creation. Rhine. We all shall stand to hold the line. So lead us with your tried command. With trust in God, take sword in hand. Hail Wilhelm and Kaiser Jesus Christ. Down with all that brood. Repay our shame with the foe's blood. And O Kaiser Jesus Christ of the Empire of the Kingdom of the Heavens and God and King Jesus Christ of the World. Long live the second dry hunt dust forever to the third dry hunt long live Kaiser Jesus Christ of the Kingdom of God and the Heavens and King of all the World from the far corners of the earth. Let this prayer be so for Anglo-Saxon Hebrew Israelites, and for the multi-ethnicity house of Judah and for the Scottish and Irish house of Judah and the descendants of the sixth day creation the Gentiles. We ask and pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Ghost God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. Amen. Ich 81 Doppelpunkt 1 den Vorsänger auf der GT von Asaf. H 81 2 jubelt Gott, der unsere Stärke ist, jauchzet dem Gott Jakobs. Ch 81 Doppelpunkt 2 H 81 3 stimmt an Liedern und nimmt die Pauke zur Hand, die liebliche Raffe mit dem Solde. Ch 81 Doppelpunkt 3 H 81 4 blaset am Neumond die Posaune, am Vollmond, unseren festlichen Tag. Z 81 Doppelpunkt 4 H 81 5, denn das ist Israels Pflicht, der Gott Jakobs hat ein Anrecht darauf. Z 81 Doppelpunkt 5 H 81 6, der verordnete es zum Zeugnis in Josef, als er auszog wie der Ägypten. Z 81 Doppelpunkt 6 H 81 7, eine Sprache, die ich nicht kannte, hörte ich, ich habe die Last von seiner Schulter genommen, seine Hände sind des Tag Gottes los geworden. Z 81 Doppelpunkt 7 H 81 8, da du mich anriffst in der Not, errettete ich dich, ich antwortete dir mit geheimnisvoller Donnerstimme und prüfte dich am Haderwasser. Pause. Z 81 Doppelpunkt 8 H 81 9, höre, mein Volk, ich will dich ermahnen, Israel, wenn du mir doch Gehör schenken wolltest. Z 81 Doppelpunkt 9 H 81 10, kein fremder Gott soll unter dir sein, und einen unbekannten Gott bete nicht an. Z 81 Doppelpunkt 10 H 81 11, ich bin der Herr, dein Gott, der dich aus Ägypten Land her aufgeführt hat. Tue deinen Mund weit auf, so will ich ihn füllen. Z 81 Doppelpunkt 11 H 81 12, aber mein Volk hat meine Stimme nicht gehorcht, und Israel wollte nichts von mir. Z 81 Doppelpunkt 12 H 81 13, da überließ ich sie der Verstocktheit ihres Herzens, dass sie wandelten nach ihrem eigenen Rat. Z 81 Doppelpunkt 13 H 81 14, wollte mein Volk mir gehorchen und Israel in meinen Wegen wandeln. Z 81 Doppelpunkt 14 H 81 15, wie leicht könnte ich ihre Feinde demütigen und meine Hand gegen ihre Widersacher wenden. Z 81 Doppelpunkt 15 H 81 16, die den Herrn hassen, müssten ihn schmeicheln, ihre Zeit aber würde ewiglich wehren. Z 81 Doppelpunkt 16 H 81 17, und er würde sie mit dem besten Weizen speisen und mit Honig aus dem Felsen sättigen. Psalms 81 Doppelpunkt 17 Alte Worship will kein Rendette der Lord is beneath his excellences, and our obligat ions to him, especially in our redemption from sin and tres. Hmm. 
Now, uh, Psalm 81. Both tribes are going through a very difficult situations during that time because of their disobedience, not obeying God, following God, and committed to his, you know, his purpose, basically. the last days of the kingdom of the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Psalm 81 verse 1 the contemporary English and it reads, Be happy and shout to God who makes us strong. Shout praise to the God of Jacob. Uh, it was important for the house of Israel and the house of Judah and Israel when it was div uh, united to follow the ceremonial laws as well as, you know, the civil and moral law. But here we read about the ceremonial law, which is no longer with us. Because Christ fulfilled the ceremonial law, the moral and civil remaining. So, as part of the house of Israel and the house of Judah, to worship God, celebrate the seasons and feasts, which help them to contemplate, reflect, meditate on the beautiful blessings of God. Blessings of God. Now the precepts and principles behi behind the these festivals and so forth still remain. <clears throat> Verse 2 it says, Sing as you play tabor, uh, tambourines and the loving sound and the loving sounding string instrument and verse 1 and 2 referring to the whole of Israel and uh, worshiping God and praising God in his temple with music and instruments were instituted by David And those precepts and principles still still belong to us 
the precepts and principles of worshiping God and praising God with instruments and all that kind of stuff is still with us today. You know, uh, of course, they used different instruments back then. And we use different instruments to praise God, but the precepts and principles still apply. Worshipping God with music, with song, with dance, with dancing, shouting, screaming, whatever. The precepts and principles behind worshipping God still applies to us today. Now, I won't go as, so as far as to say that everyone needs to dance and clap and shout and scream and all that kind of stuff like some churches which is, some churches I mean there's nothing wrong with doing that it's okay to do that but I think also worshiping God without instruments can be a blessing as well in various other ways the means of worshiping God with music Verse 3, sound the trumpets and start the new moon festival. We must also celebrate when the moon is full. This is the law in Israel, and it was given to us by God of Jacob. The descendants of Joseph were told to obey it when God led them out from the land of Egypt. In a language unknown to me, I heard someone say. So, and celebrating these new moon festivals and various other festivals, other ver uh, various other uh, festivals, it was instituted by God or instituted by God for them to obey and follow when God was leaving leaving uh, leading them out of the uh, captivity of uh, Egypt Which, you know, language was, uh, you know, the language that the Egyptians spoke at that time. Verse 6, I lifted the burden from your shoulder and took the heavy basket from your hands. When you were in trouble, I rescued you. And from the thunder clouds, I answered your prayers. Later, I tested you at... at... Mirabah. Spring. Uh, descendants of Joseph. Referring to Ephraim and Manasseh, who later, uh, Ephraim, Manasseh, and Great Britain, America, descended from Ephraim and Manasseh, 
Although it's been mixing and it's not sure which one is which. But anyways. And so, God delivered them from Egypt, led them out of the wilderness, the desert that they wandered on, to the promised land, rescued them, took care of them, fed them, led them, healed them, and so forth. Verse 8, listen, my people, while I, the Lord, correct you, Israel, if you would only pay attention to me. Don't worship foreign gods or bow down to gods you know nothing about. Verse 10, I am the Lord, your God, I rescued you from Egypt just Ask and I will give you whatever you need. Well, in the last days of the kingdom, kingdoms, the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah, their last days, and God is telling them and warning them that they need to get right with God, praise and worship God, and follow and celebrate the ceremonial festivals and to worship and sing and praise God with music for their deliverance and exodus from Egypt into the promised land to praise them to praise God I mean they need to praise God celebrate the festivals keep it as God instituted and commanded And God's telling them to not worship foreign gods, Israel. Verse 11, but my people Israel... You refuse to listen and you, but my people Israel, you refuse to listen and you have nothing to do with me. Verse 12, so I let you be stubborn and keep following your own Advice. My people Israel, if only you would listen and do as I say. They wouldn't listen, so God turned them out, so to speak. Shun them. divorced them to turn them out, shun them for a little bit and let the devil ha uh, have at it with them so that they would be in a put 
put in the position of Saul on this and turn back to God, back to the covenant of grace that God has made with us. Verse 14. I, the Lord, would quickly defeat your enemies with my mighty power. Everyone who hates me would come crawling, and that would be the end of them. But, uh, verse 16, but I would feed you with the finest bread, with the best honey, until you were full. And this law, referring to the, making this law with uh, all of Israel, referring to the first dispensation of the covenant of grace. How was the covenant of grace administered under the Old Testament? The covenant of grace was administered under the Old Testament by promises, prophecy, sacrifices, circumcision, the Passover, and other types and ordinances, which did all for signify Christ. them to come signify Christ then to come and were that time sufficient to build up the elect and faith in the promised Messiah by whom they then have full remission of sin and eternal salvation So celebrating these feasts under the ceremonial laws was mandatory. It was part of the ceremonial law. And worshiping God in the temple with music and so forth, Christ fulfilled the ceremonial law. The moral and civil law still remains. But however... The principles behind worshiping and praising God still apply to us to celebrate, reflect, and focus on God. And so there's stipulation obviously attached to that if they obey God's law, they put their faith and trust in the Messiah, the trust and faith in the Messiah, then they would be liberated, set free, set free, transformed, blessed, and so forth. And the same thing applies to us today. Either you're in Adam or you're in Christ Jesus. Either you've accepted Christ, either you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, or you don't. If you do, you'll be blessed, transformed, Formed. If you don't, you will suffer the serious consequences for your sinful action with damnation and uh, eternal separation from God for all eternity. In general, that's what God's saying to them. And the retribution on top of that. And the same applies to us. There's retribution if you're in Adam. If you're not in Adam,
and walking with Christ. You won't suffer the consequences of God's retribution for your one sinful, wicked ways. So, uh, verse 1, Jacob, referring to all of Israel, descendants of Jacob, referring to ten Ten northern tribes of Israel. The ten northern tribes of Israel, the kingdom of Israel. Then all of Israel again, all twelve tribes, liberation from Egypt and captivity, signs and wonders and miracles that confirm the truth in God, his trustworthiness, one who Blesses, takes care, feeds his children. that said before it means all of Israel twelve northern kingdoms of Israel and then all the tribes again Jacob, Israel, descendants of Joseph house of Israel and who are the descendants of Joseph obviously Ephraim and Manasseh which Great Britain and America happen to be descended from but again Great Britain and America there's been lots of mixing so no one's a hundred percent this or that Uh, it's also a song of worship and a prophetic prediction and warning to them if they continue in their disobedience they will suffer the serious consequences of their actions by retribution and damnation for all eternity And if they don't desist in the sinful disobedience way, ways, God will deliver them, bless them, and transform them. So, Israel... And Judah I didn't really, you know, for time, uh, periods of time, they'd return back to God. But Israel and Judah went through 
varieties of other varieties of spiritual apostasy and that spiritual apostasy led to their punishment the damnation and retribution that led to captivity but then like I said God divorces Israel turns back to Israel and marries the new bride, the blood washed, sanctified, pure bride, same old Israel, same old Judah, same old Gentiles, but transformed and changed. God did that to teach him a lesson so they'll repent of their sins and get right with God and serve God and they will that refers to Psalm 81 being prophet prophecy also and prayer and music a song kind of like an anthem a pronouncement to all the world to praise God to repent of their sins and turn to the Lord and be blessed And so, referring to the uh, prophecy, referring to the immediate future, which obviously is the collapse of the kingdoms and the captivity, the scattering and returning back to God. But immediately, the scattering... Uh, the collapse of the kingdom's captivity, captivity, and then obviously Judah returning back from Babylonian captivity uh, after seventy one uh, seventy one years. 70 year Babylon, uh, 70 year Babylonian captivity returned back to the Holy Land, rebuilt the temple, and returned back to the covenant of grace that God made with them. Their faith in Christ, the Messiah. And of course, when Judah returned, they shortened their names to Jews, and they may, became a multicultural, uh, became a multi-ethnic, uh, multi ethnicity. Uh, nation and of course Judah messing up God already divorced the house of Israel turned to Judah and God doesn't read a divorce divorce Judah until the retribution and punishment for Judah's sinful wicked apostasy in the first century he divorces them 
returns back to them and Israel transform change takes a new bride a transform change bride same old Israel same old Judah just transform cleansed made spotless appear bride for Jesus Christ uh, Jesus Christ and it re refers to oh uh, forgot what it is at it tells about this account in the book of the of the apocrypha the Maccabee and there was of course More period of apostasy, and then under Judas Maccabeus, the Jews were delivered. Jews, the uh, when Judah returned back from uh, the seventy-year Babylonian captivity, they sh the Judah shortened their name to Jews. Maccabee uh, and that's why I recommend one of the reasons I recommend the Apocrypha because it tells you about certain accounts with Antiochus fifth epiphany and liberation for the Jews under Macca Judas Maccabeus and then that return and then that period of apostasy again for Judah in the first century and God punishes them Judah for their apostasy disobedience spiritual apostasy spiritual adultery from God punish them with retribution scatters them divorces them, turns their back on them, and returns back to Israel and Judah. The purified, cleansed bride. Made white as snow by the positional right standing we receive uh, in God justification being made in total right standing before God uh, positional positionally in right standing not in actuality that doesn't come until later after the consummation of all things and the restoration or renewal of all things through Christ Jesus when he returns as the conquering king to the earth and then it communicates then the future future unfolding history of life the periods of apostasy periods of recession periods of recession and periods of progression recession periods of apostasy for 
the house of Israel, the house of Judah, and the Gentiles as well for the church. Periods of progression, periods of recession for the church, consequently losing some souls. One third of the angels, which is mankind, the rest being saved. Unfolding plan, periods of apostasy, recession and progression for the church, consequently losing some souls, but slowly and gradually the world is Christianized, ushering in a golden age of peace and pro prosperity. And Christ returns as the conquering king to consummate, renew all things. Paradise lost, moving from paradise, uh, paradise lost, moving from paradise, paradise lost, moving from paradise lost. Moving from paradise to lost to the problem, moving from paradise lost to paradise restored, and The problem of sin and death fully finally being resolved forever, for all eternity. Obviously, the millennium, immediate context, the collapse of the kingdoms, the captivity under Antigonus, 5th and 5th and year liberation, 1st century, the millennium, the periods of apostasy, periods of recession, periods of progression for the church slowly and gradually. The millennium, the second world age and heaven age slowly and gradually being phased out. And the third world age and heaven age slowly being coming into existence for all eternity. Ah. And it refers to the resurrection and the final judgment, the great white throne judgment. Some Punish, elect some pun uh, punish for all uh, punish for all eternity, and some resurrected to eternal life for all eternity. The separating completely the wheats and the chaff, De uh, death, Hades. Satan and all the uh, and all the unrighteous people, the wicked, the evil, the Kenites, the fallen angels, all cast into the lake of fire, which is hell for all eternity, and all in Christ resurrected to eternal life for all eternity. Uh, with many blessings boasted upon them by God, which gives, determines different responsibilities they'll have in the new heavens and new earth, and so on. We see that. In there. Because if you look at Psalm 81, it's a type and shadow of God's unfolding plan of redemption. The world slowly and gradually being Christianized, ushering in a golden age of peace and prosperity. 
course, the return of Christ, final judgment, and Christ's continual rule in the eternal state. And the Bible clearly teaches, if you look at uh, Hebrews 10, that Christ fulfilled the types and shadows of the Old Testament. That means he fulfilled the Old Testament completely. That means not only is the Old Testament uh, history, prophecy, it is a type and shadow of Christ and the effects that will take place through Christ's death, burial, resurrection, ascension, rule, return, and continual reign for all eternity over his people, the empire of Israel for all eternity. type and shadow of Christ's redemption that we receive through Christ Jesus' resurrected life. That means that Psalm, all of Psalms is some type of prophecy one way or another. All of Scripture is types and shadows that Christ fulfilled the whole Old Testament. But, we're not going to get into all that today, we'll just leave it there at that, and let's take a step back for a moment. So what's important about Psalm 81, well, what's important about Psalm 81 is that we celebrate and praise God for the, vic the many victories that he gives us in life. Because our life is of being transformed by Christ is also slowly and gradually that Christ works and wills through the Holy Spirit in and through us in our whole lifetime, adjusting, disciplining, correcting, reproofing. Molding, transforming, and changing into the likeness and character of Jesus Christ. All the way. God's shaped Psalm 81 written by the psalmist to God's elect in the Old Testament and the psalm still apply the Psalm 81 was written to God's elect in the Old Testament and Psalm 81 is for God's elect today, which is prophecy, edification, and transformation. No. So, we as God's elect must celebrate and praise God for the many victories that he has given us in life for the many periods of time of refreshing, giving him praise and glory for supplying and providing for our needs in life, praising him for his redemption, 
liberation, transformation, and so forth, and the promises of the, the blessings and promises of the second dispensation of the covenant of grace, the millennial blessings attached to it for all of God's elect. All the way until the close of history is brought to a conclusion when Christ, the conquering king, returns, defeats the devil and the flesh, and the resurrection takes place. Judgment, the separation of the wheat and chaff, the chaff in hell, the wheat in heaven, paradise. In the new heavens and new earth, the final world age and heaven age, which is the third world age and heaven age. To praise him for the victories that he has given us. To remember, to trust, and to obey him and live for him and praise his name and give him glory and serve him concentrate and focus on him through praise, song, dance, so forth, for the victories, for salvation, redemption, for the promises of the millennial blessings, and so forth, the promises for victories in the future. Slowly, gradually, these victories take place. And all the sign, the light of creation, the light of conscience, especially light of revelation, confirms God's truth. That He is the one true God. We are to serve Him and live for Him. And it also shows you that in a praise and worship, there should be times of reflection sorrow and so forth for our sinful wicked ways and a reminder of the realities without God that we cannot triumph or have victory without God in our lives living in and through us a reminder of the of what of the consequences for your sinful actions in the past. A reminder without Christ Jesus, we would be damned for all eternity because we're so sinful and so wicked. And so we needed the prophet priest, mediator, and king to redeem us and transform us into something completely and totally new, an eternal man, not a temporal man. God's elect should not ever, ever worship other gods. Because there are not only there eternal, there not only there's consequences for their sinful actions and also eternal uh, consequences as well. Spiritual apostasy, spiritual adultery from the one truth living God, our husband, and his elect, and very elect, the church, Israel, belongs to God, and God cannot stand spiritual apostasy, spiritual adultery, And 
and if God and fierce consequences. But if, uh, but if God, if God's elect and very elect turn back to Christ, they will be liberated and set free for all eternity to transform, change. All souls belong to God, as we read before in that particular passage we read in a few sermons back. Now, uh, when the psalmist is writing to the two kingdoms, the kingdom of Judah, or the, the southern kingdom of Judah, the northern kingdom of Israel, when he was speaking, when he was speaking to them, not all of them were God's elect. Not all were Israel. Only those who were God's elect. Not the non-elect. And so, the non-elect, so to speak, the unsaved, The, referring to the elect and you might say the non-elect those elected the those elected to reprobation or not all of Israel or the elect only those who have commitment and faith in the Messiah and because of the sinful, wicked ways of, of that period of time, obviously the non-elect suffer the serious consequences for their sins, and those consequences, and those who were God's elect, the very elect under the Old Testament or at, during that time, experience and suffer the consequences of a sinful wicked a sinful wicked nations these two kingdoms you gotta realize isn't it? there probably weren't too many people saved really during the old testament because the progression of the slow gradual God because the progression of God's unfolding plan a redemption takes slowly and gradually the world is slowly and gradually Christianized us are in a golden age of peace and prosperity that process takes slowly and gradually because during the time of the apostles when Jesus said the narrow road not to walk to walk not to walk on the right or uh, wide road but on the narrow road it was referring, obviously, the road at that time was narrow, narrow, and slowly, gradually, that road becomes wider and larger and bigger. Slowly and gradually, to get ourselves to such a state as the Christianization of the world and us during the golden age of peace and prosperity, that will take lots and lots of hard work from God's elect and very elect. And obviously it cannot come into being existent without the power of the Holy Ghost making it a reality for all personally and universally. It takes lots of hard work. To bring uh, God's elect back to the covenant of grace that God made with them. That work takes slowly and gradually. All souls belong to God, 
And so that work takes hard work, it's slow, it's gradual, and so on. And many trials and many setbacks will occur. There'll be periods of recession in your life. And there may time to time be periods of spiritual apostasy, even adultery in your life. And that is probably God letting you know telling you that I've put, I've put you in this situation so you can still and be able to understand the profoundness of the seriousness of the consequences of sin and how, uh, how God hates it and how unrighteous and unholy it is until you get to that point and then he'll pick you back up again and keep you on the trail, his purpose, his plan for you in your life and your overall plan that you play in the whole, God's whole universal plan for the world. He that done a good work will carry to completion. This is the reality of the church. Work is going to be hard, long, and slow. And gradually, it will take all of God's elect and very elect to make it happen. And especially the power of the Holy Ghost, because he's the only one that can bring about the victory over that. We cannot do it whatsoever, bring victory in our lives without God. It's pointless and hopeless. The retrobate situation, reality that we live in. Hard work. But it will be fulfilled. And it will be fulfilled. And the late 19th century and the 20th century The rapture theory was invented. And that apostasy slowly and gradually crept in the church. See, apostasy slowly and gradually uh, crept into Judah in the first century. That Apostasy slowly and gradually worked its way into the whole thing. And before you know it, the Pharisees and Sadducees are teaching uh, completely different Judaism to Judah rather than the biblical teaching of Judah, which is a post-millennial kingdom, not a pre-millennial kingdom. But in the late 19th century, the theory was invented. And that apostasy crept in the church. And it first started manifesting itself in all 
little old lady named Margaret McDonald that had a vision that then eventually through various preachers led to the new theology known as the rapture theology. In other words, the premillennial dispensational pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib rapture theology that led astray the church into apostasy. And the church lost its power and its effectiveness. Well, obviously other apostasies crept into the church as well in the 20th century. This apostasy destroyed, weakened the church, its influence, and all that kind of stuff on society. And led to, you know, kind of the messed up situation we find ourselves in. But that's all a part of the curse and the sinful wickedness of man's heart that also led to that. But then, but the church is starting to be enlightened and awakened. Uh, Anglo-Saxon Israel descendants of the ten northern tribes Anglo-Saxon Israel which are descendants of Great Britain, Canada Alaska and America. That's where the House of Israel is today. Europe, Alaska, Canada, America. They were and they were deceived. They were destroyed by the apostasy, spiritual apostasies. But there is a sense that there's that spiritual apostasy. There's this, a spiritual apostasy that shall always be in existence, and that is the apostasy that Satan brought to the world, that brought damnation and so forth by our free will of choice that we made, and by our free will of choice we actualized sin into existence. And so, Anglo-Saxon Israel was under his spiritual apostasy for the you know, start of the late 19th century, early 20th century, all the way to now. And now I believe that Israel is waking up, the house of Israel is waking up, their hearts are going to be enlightened. And they're being wakened up by the Gentiles. Who are bringing, who bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to them, to those who never, who never heard that, that gospel, this gospel. The Gentiles, descendants of the six day creation, obviously. And they'll be waking. And of course, Judah will be waking, descend, awaken, descendants of the house of Judah will be wakened again. The Scottish Jews and the Irish Jews will be wakened up. Elected unto salvation and life. And the elect being gathered unto Christ gathering the elect and very elect unto himself to a new heaven and a new earth, wherein righteousness and holiness will reign for all eternity, where sin shall not. And, I don't know, sometimes God's elect start worshiping and fall falling and worshiping other idols such as idols the god of the idols of money greed selfishness narcissism
psychopathic, sociopathic thinking and attitudes. Ideas and beliefs that are contrary to the Word of God that may contradict itself in you. All of us tend sometimes to make those things more important and we start depending upon ourselves for the victory and start getting puffed up thinking, hey, we've accomplished this. Uh, it, is, it is by the grace of God through the power of the Holy Ghost that you were able to accomplish it. Yeah, you did your part and God did his part. But he made the result happen. And so sometimes we make these types of things our idols and worship them sort of and our thinking philosophy so forth and so we got to make sure we don't have any of that reality in our lives and when we do we repent of it and get it out of the way get right with God and see to it and constantly check yourself again and again to evaluate to see what the situation looks like are you making more of these, this, that, these thing, whatever, more important in God than, uh, more important than God. Yep, and so we need to praise and worship God. For the vi many victories have given you in your life, for your redemption, for your salvation, and the promises of the covenant of grace, and the blessings of the covenant of grace, the millennial blessings, we need to praise Him not only for the victories that He's given us in life for redemption, but the victories to come and ultimate eternal life with God forever triumphant uh, history with the gospel of Jesus Christ and the golden age of peace and prosperity for God's elect and very elect during that time just before Christ returns how long will that want to be? I don't know. What is it going to look like? I don't know. It probably will be very little noticeable. Uh, it probably you probably won't very uh, won't notice it very that very much. Little at a time, as it sprouts and grows, it becomes. What God's ultimate plan of redemption was for us all the world. And it's also important in music and song, worship, praise, whatever, to also have a reminder of just exactly your state of condition was before you were saved. Reminder your situation so that you will stay humble important to have music to express praise and worship in God in various styles of music with different beats and so forth, up beats, down beats, you know, you name it. And it doesn't just end at worshiping at church. Also, you can do the same thing at home. You can turn on some Christian music and close your eyes and worship God. I think that's very important, but... 
worship, worshiping God in spirit and truth, because it's uh, worshiping God, praising God is much more than that. Our life should be a life that expresses the compassion, love, and desires of Christ. That our life should uh, respond, that we should respond to the music of the Holy Spirit in our lives, in our walk, and so forth. Listening to the music, responding to music, just not mimicking uh, what God is trying to teach you or mimicking the Holy Spirit or whatever. Respond, listen to the music and respond to the music. And so, in that sense, our life should be a life of praise and worship in our hearts towards God and how we conduct and live our lives, express ourselves, communicate to people, how we witness, you know. Glory, hallelujah. All the signs of the life, creation, light of conscience, special revelation are there. You know, and yeah, we, and you know, I think we live in a very pessimistic period of time in history. Looks like everything is just going to fall apart completely forever. And that there's nothing you can do about it. You look at the state of the condition of the world, what's happening around the world, it's unbelievable. And we listen to the news and fill our heads with just negative stuff. And so, I think it's important for us to take a step back, take a time out, so to speak, and pursue positive news to reflect and think about things in society. Look at the breakthroughs of medicine and science computer technology, so forth, people living longer and healthier. So, this, so we see the signs of the Christianization of the world taking place slowly and gradually. Because we are way better and healthier than we were 250 years ago, first century. Moving, becoming in some ways less cruel, in other ways more cruel, but the, you can't, it's very little notice, uh, you can't really notice it too much. But it's there and you see it. And God is telling you, See my brothers, see my sisters, look what is happening. The church is waking up. We have more Christian Gentiles than we ever had before. And Judah and Israel are waking up. Israel, uh... Israel, referring to obviously the Caucasians, which is Great Britain, Canada, Alaska, America, and so forth. And that's where they're settled. So, uh, Judah, obviously, and the Scottish and Irish Jews, too. So, uh, the signs are there. And the church, God's, the house of Israel, and even Judah is beginning to wake up, being lightened through the factual calling it. And I think the effectual calling sort of just kind of surely works. It also, it works its way through the, uh, the whole thing, you know, through and through. 
slowly and gradually, impermanently, or impermanence, slowly and gradually, the progress, enlightening, uh, the effects will call on enlightening of the Holy Spirit as all, as the, that all, as in the elect being Christ gathering the elect unto himself to a new temple, new kingdom, new kingdom, new church, the elect, Christ is the empire of Israel as Christ the Kaiser, king, uh, Christ the Kaiser, priest, prophet, mediator, to the elect. For that sexual calling of enlightening the world slowly and gradually is coming through the regenerating, sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit as the second world age and heaven age phased, is phased out slowly. The second world age and heaven age is slowly and gradually being phased out and the third world age and heaven age is slowly and gradually being established through the systematic preaching and teaching of the word of God. Christianization, golden age of peace, prosperity, moving all the way to becoming a permanent eternal kingdom and Christ's continual rule in the eternal state, the third world age and heaven age. So we should keep that in mind. And it, can, it is confirmed by the light of creation, light of conscience, and special revelation. It's just not the confirmed in special revelation. No, it's confirmed in the light of creation. And it is also confirmed in the light of conscience. What is the light of conscience? Well, the Ten Commandments, the moral, uh, the moral and civil law. of the duality of this but it's looked like in the past to people that the post millennials view is doesn't have any merit to it World War One you know, World War Two seemed like eh, it ain't really going to be a reality, and so there are going to be throughout a period of times of history. There's going to be periods of time where you're going to see the church is completely uh, see the church completely stumble. You're going to see like uh, the spirits continue spiritual apostasies, adultery. The dig, uh, recession of, uh, you know, how many people are saved or whatever, because there may be more wars to come in the future. And so there are all these things that are going on which make you doubt the legitimacy of, well, what God's teaching. But when God gives salvation, he gives salvation to the whole person, society. He completely liberates and triumphs and tri uh, triumphs over it because God is more powerful than the devil. And the devil doesn't have any power to overthrow uh, God. And so, therefore, he'll be more saved than not. Some say they're going to be more lost than not saved. Well, that whole view is just completely, absolutely ridiculous. Because when God, because God promised in Scripture, true, real salvation, which means the whole world being liberated, transformed, and resurrected to eternal life.
question I have, uh, question I ask is, how do you look at the Bible and everything around you, half full or half empty? Well, I contend the Bible teaches half full and more than that, abundance overflowing all you can drink and so on you know music and song and all that kind of stuff keeps us focused on the positive things good news of God puts you under positive influence so you think positively and think on godly and holy righteous things because God wants to save you, transform you, change you, bless you, make you happy in life. And the only way you're going to find happiness in life is in a relationship with Christ. He'll give you peace in the midst of the storms. His word keeps you focused on that. And so you got to keep focused on that. And well, wants us to educate ourselves too on good stuff, you know? And so, there are always going to be those temptations that the devil's going to put in your way that tempts you that shows seeds of doubt that makes you think ah, I ain't God may think thoughts like God ain't doing worth the squat I'm going to have to take action temptations like that temptations that so doubt what kind of victories God brought in your life in the past shows shows death in the midst of the storm that you're living in saying you ain't gonna find no victory shows doubt whether you will ever find victory or not or if will ever, if the war will ever be Christianized and uh, uh, Christianized, I say in a golden age of peace and prosperity. See the doubt that the devil will so that it will try to persuade you from the walk and tempt you. And we are human, sinful, wicked, and we fall. And so when we fall, we got to get right with God. And we need to keep focus on the positivity of the word of God the positivity of the education of the light of creation conscience and special revelation books uh, so on to keep us focused in song and dance and music uh, listening to the probing of the Holy Spirit And step in, step under his authority, control the Holy Spirit that will influence you in the building of the elect and the edification of those in the faith. So there'll be things that'll persuade you and keep you off, focused. And being human, you know, those doubts are going to be sowed for time to time. Because you look around and you say, man, what is this stuff going to get straightened out? The only thing I can say, God, is God says to be patient and wait on his 
moving, the moving of the Holy Spirit and the moving of the whole direction of history, the whole direction of the world to observe slowly and gradually, seeing the reversal in the direction of the world that it was going uh, on, going in when the fall took place. Well, that's being reversed through the through the regen uh, re through the regen uh, regenerating sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit working in will his whole plan in history and time in our lives and obviously God's elect is very elect is going to praise God and give him glory for the victories in each and every one of our lives when we were were elected unto salvation for all uh, elected unto salvation and eternal life through Christ's death, bell, resurrection, ascension, rule, uh, rule, and reign. In our lives, he's uh, doing that in God's elect. And the elect will do that, praise and worship him, want to do the things that God wants them to do. And God, like, uh, God's eye, we can see that God was a select, uh, a person, uh, likes to celebrate, like celebration, festive, in people's lives to keep uh, uh, your self solid thirsting after righteousness and being edified and won't serve other gods or worship any other gods and put their trust and love and faith and belief in the victories of Christ, which will manifest itself triumphantly in history and time, when con uh, conviction and conversions finished, and that work, when the second dispensation of the coming of grace's work is finished. And it will be time for the third world age and heaven age, total state. So you might look at the coming of grace is the only solution for reversal of fortune for the world that the covenant of grace that God made with Adam and all his descendants and the six-day creation, the solution, the only solution to the state and condition of the fall to bring about reversal of fortune for the world, regeneration, renewal, transformation, worldwide perspective. It's the only solution for that. The condition and state that man is in when the fall happened, that the world is in while we're under the curse of the fall. Because we have all 
our current carnal, we have, we still have our carnal spirit, and we have the Holy Spirit, the carnal spirit wants to go in one direction, the Holy Spirit wants to go in in other directions so gradually and slowly it takes lots of work to produce like a seed there and like a seed to grow the new man that is conforming to the likeness and image of Christ Jesus the reversal fortune, the reversal, the covenant of grace, the only solution for the reversal of the fortunes of this world caused by the fall, the curse of the fall, regeneration, rejuvenation, transformation, so forth, the new man being changed and developing, growing in a different direction, and the old man slowly and gradually fading out. On the way, the new man, for the new man to come into reality is through the regenerating, sanctifying work of the Holy Spirit and the defeating in destroying of the carnal spirit slowly and gradually phasing out the old man Adam and the new man the last Adam Jesus Christ coming into existence slowly and gradually in the fortunes of mankind and the old man slowly and gradually fading out for all eternity. Adam, the old, or you could look at the two, uh, Adam and the last Adam, Adam and the last Adam, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ representing the, uh, new, world age and heaven age and Adam being a part of the old the second world age and heaven age and Christ the last Adam the third world age and heaven age coming into existence and the old man will slowly and gradually one day be defeated for all eternity. The curse of sin that was caused by the fall will permanently and fully defeat it. Paradise lost become paradise restored. The problem of sin and death fully and finally being resolved and the new man coming into his own, so to speak. His elevated status, status, Christ continue reigning and ruling in the eternal state, state over his empire. God's elect and very elect for all eternity. Blessings, rewards, different responsibilities. Okay. You know, I have a habit of di digressing. Digressing. From the subject at hand that we're looking at here. So, uh, Praise. So we need God's elect. Uh, praises God. God's elect, the very elect. Praise God and give Him glory for the victories and triumphs 
triumph, triumphs in our lives in the past, taking place now and the future, and the so gradual fulfilling of the promises and blessings of the covenant of grace. And so, the God's elect uh, worship, uh, listen to the music, respond to the music, the Holy Spirit probing them. And celebrate the triumph and victories that will take place in the future. And we need a constant reminder of those facts. No matter what no matter what kind of situation you find yourself in, God is slowly and gradually working, you might say, behind the scenes to bring you the help that you need, that word you need, that prophetic word, that word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, prophecy. Healing. And the peace and comfort that he will continue to give you because his song music constantly reminds you of the fact. Psalm 81, you might say, is sort of a type and shadow, or type and shadow. A brief excerpt of God's unfolding plan of redemption, if you want to look at it that way. Because the good. So let us pronounce Psalm 81 to the world, the good news, and God's stipulations and warnings. You do it my way, follow me, you'll be blessed. If you don't, you will be cursed because everyone is going to get what's coming to them. The good, the bad, the ugly. You know, so let's pronounce Psalm 81 to the far corners of the earth, to the world. Let's look at the troubles around us, a springboard of opportunities for you to shine, to flourish in righteousness and holiness and godliness in whatever place that God has ordained and elected you to in God's overall plan of his Universal Empire, the, king, the Empire of Israel, the elect, the church, the called out ones, the house of Judah, the house of Israel, and the Gentiles who believe and accept Christ as their Lord and Savior, and life, complete trust, belief, and reliance upon his truth the guidance of the Holy Spirit let you let the word of God be your magnet So, we got to keep that in mind. God's working behind the scenes to give you the help to move you into the position, where, uh, move you into the position or elevate you to the position of whatever role that God wants you to play in his overall universal 
fan of God's unfolding plan of redemption, his universal empire, his spiritual reigning in our hearts and minds as we reign with him, elevate us to that stat status. Whether that be preaching, whether that be you be a bishop, whether God's called you to be an archbishop or a bishop or a deacon or an evangelist or a healer, whatever, or a leader, a government official of some kind in your community, whatever, elevates you to whatever status or level that he wants you to be, he'll help you get there. But you got to realize that he is working behind the scenes, slowly and gradually giving you the help you need, but we must be patient and wait on him. Keeping your eyes open to prayer, praise, you know, of where the Holy Spirit might be leading you to. And, well, it's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of work for us to, uh, for the Great Commission to be fulfilled slowly and gradually. And, it's, and God's elect and very elect got to be patient about it. Patient about victories that will come in our lives in the future. Victories. The victory of God's promises and blessings of the millennial blessings, the covenant of grace, the second dispensation of the covenant of grace. Keep your eyes open on the splurts of great wakenings and revivals, which we, I think, we're in, because I see great things taking place, not only for God's whole church, but here at this ministry. So cheer up. And praise him till then. Psalms eighty one one to seven. All the worship we can render to the Lord is beneath His excellences, and our obligations to Him, especially in our redemption from sin and wrath. What God had done on Israel's behalf was kept in remembrance by public solemnities. To make a deliverance appear more gracious, more glorious, it is good to observe all that makes the trouble we are delivered from appear more grievous. We ought never to forget the base and ruinous drudgery to which Satan, our oppressor, Wild us, but when, in distress of conscience, we are led to cry for deliverance, the Lord answers our prayers and sets us at liberty. Convictions of sin and trials by affliction prove his regard to his people. If the Jews, on their solemn feast days, were thus to call to mind our redemption out of Egypt, much more ought we, on the Christian Sabbath, to call to mind a more glorious redemption wrought out for us by our Lord Jesus Christ from our bondage. Psalms 81, 8 to 16. 
We cannot look for too little from the creature, nor too much from the Creator. We may have enough from God, if we pray for it in faith. All the wickedness of the world is owing to man's willfulness. People are not religious, because they will not be so God is not the author of their sin. He leaves them to the lusts of their own hearts, and the counsels of their own heads. If they do not well, the blame must be upon themselves. The Lord is unwilling that any should perish. What enemies sinners are to themselves? It is sin that makes our troubles long, and our salvation slow. Upon the same conditions of faith and obedience do Christians hold those spiritual and eternal good things, which the pleasant fields and fertile hills of Canaan showed for. Christ is the bread of life, he is the rock of salvation, and his promises are as honey to pious minds. But those who reject him as their Lord and Master must also lose him as their Savior and their reward. Psalm 81. Let's look at out. Look at Psalm 81 out of the JPS, and it reads like this. PSA 81 to 4, 81 to 5. For it is a statute for Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. PSA 81 to 5, 81 to 6. He appointed it in Joseph for a testimony, when he went forth against the land of Egypt. The speech of one that I knew not did I hear. PSA 81 to 6, 81 to 7. I removed his shoulder from the burden, his hands were freed from the basket. PSA 81 to 7, 81 to 8. Thou didst call in trouble, and I rescued thee. I answered thee in the secret place of thunder, I proved thee at the waters of Meribah. Psalm. PSA 81 to 8, 81 to 9. Hear, O my people, and I will admonish thee, O Israel, if thou wouldest hearken unto me. PSA 81 to 9, 81 hours 10 minutes. There shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any foreign God. PSA 81 hours 10 minutes, 81 hours 11 minutes. I am the Lord thy God who brought thee up out of the land of Egypt, open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. PSA 81 hours 11 minutes, 81 hours 12 minutes, but my people hearkened not to my voice, and Israel would none of me. PSA 81 hours 12 minutes, 81 hours 13 minutes, so I let them go after the stubbornness of their heart, that they might walk in their own counsels. PSA 81 hours 13 minutes, 81 hours 14 minutes, so that my people would hearken unto me, that Israel would walk in my ways. PSA 81 hours 14 minutes, 81 hours 15 minutes, I would soon subdue their enemies, and turn my hand against their adversaries. PSA 81 hours 15 minutes, 81 hours 16 minutes, the haters of the Lord should dwindle away before him, and their punishment should endure forever. PSA 81 hours 16 minutes, 81 hours 17 minutes, they should also be fed with the fat of wheat, and with honey out of the rock would I satisfy thee. JPS Through God's divine election, all of God's elect will be gathered back to himself for all eternity. divine election all of the world will be saved and gathered back to Christ himself for all eternity back to the covenant of grace that God made with us
Psalmen 81, Doppelpunkt 17. Jegliche Anbetung, die wir dem Herrn wiedergeben kann, ist unter seinen Leckereien und unsere Verpflichtungen zu ihm, vor allem in unserer Erlösung von der Sünde und Zorn. Was Gott Israels stellvertretend getan hatte, war Erinnerung durch öffentliche Feierlichkeit gehalten. Um eine Erlösung mehr gnädig, mehr herrlich, das Erscheinen zu machen, ist gut, alles zu beobachten, die macht die Mühe, die wir von erlöst sind, mehr schmerzlich erscheinen. Wir sollten nie die Base und ruinöse Schufterei vergessen, die Satan, unserer Unterdrücker, uns gebracht. Aber wenn ein Bedrängnis des Gewissens, wir geführt werden, zu weinen für die Erlösung der Herr unsere Gebete beantwortet, und setzt uns unbenommen. Überzeugungen der Sünde und Studien von Kummer, beweisen seine Kenntnis seines Volkes. Wenn die Juden an ihren feierlichen Festtagen, so waren zum Aufrufen ihrer Erlösung aus Ägypten Geist, vielmehr sollten wir, am Sabbat Christ ihren aufrufen, in den Sinn einer mehr glorreichen Abteilung, Schmiedeeisen für uns von unserem Herrn Jesus Christus, von schlechter Knechtschaft. Psalm 81, Doppelpunkt 816 Wir können nicht von der Kreatur zu wenig noch zu viel vom Schöpfer suchen. Wir haben genug von Gott, vielleicht, wenn wir im Glauben für ihn beten. Alle Schlechtigkeit der Welt ist wild für des Mannes in Zusammenhang zu stehen. Menschen sind nicht religiös, weil sie nicht zu sein werden. Gott ist nicht der Autor ihrer Sünde, er überlässt ihnen den Begierden ihres eigenen Herzens und die Ratschläge ihrer eigenen Köpfe. Wenn sie nicht gut, muss die Schuld auf sich. Der Herr ist nicht bereit, dass jeder zugrunde geht. Was feinde Sünder zu sich selbst sind. Es ist Sünde, dass unsere lange Mühen und unsere Rettung zu langsam macht. Nach den gleichen Bedingungen des Glaubens und Gehorsams halten Christen diese spirituelle und ewig gute Dinge, angenehmen Felder und fruchtbaren Hügel, die Skenen hier zeigte. Christus ist das Brot des Lebens. Er ist der Fels des Heils, und seine Verheißungen sind wie Honig für fromme Köpfe. Aber diejenigen, die ihn als ihren Herrn und Meister ablehnen, müssen auch ihn als ihren Erlöser und ihr Lohn verlieren. So I want to think about that. I want you to think about that. Uh, today, you can have an opportunity to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior today. Deal with your eternal soul once and for all. And it's very easy and very simple to become a Christian. All you have to do is accept Christ as your Lord and Savior of your life. And so what I'm going to do, if you want to, because uh, God wants you to be, to share in the blessings of the covenant of grace, the millennial blessings, the promises, of the of the covenant of grace, and he wants to transform and change you and turn you into a totally transformed, radical, totally radically transform you completely. In whole in your character, uh, character and holiness and righteousness. And holiness and righteousness. I want you to share in the promises and blessings, to see the victories in your life, being totally transformed, changed, glorified, elevated to God's aristocracy, aristocrats, ambassadors servants of the Lord, so on. He wants to transform and change and do some more, uh, do something mighty in you. So my dear brothers and sisters, you have a choice today to either accept Christ as your Lord and Savior or not. As C.S. Lewis once said, there's only two kinds of people, those that those that say, God, thy will be done, and those that God says, thy will be done. Just paraphrasing. So, uh, 
they have an opportunity right now to receive that, to receive peace, to receive healing, to receive transformation because God has a mighty work he wants to do in your life. He's going to work signs and wonders and miracles through your life. He's going to transform and change you and you're going to play an awesome role in his overall plan of fulfilling the great commission being God's soldiers for the just cause of Christ Jesus, the one true religion. So if you want, accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's very easy. What I'll do is all we do is say a prayer. And you just repeat after it, believe in your heart. And you will be saved. If you can't repeat after I uh, repeat, if you can't say the words, just listen to it and believe it in the heart. So, uh, if you want to get right with God and take care of that business today, then all right, come forward, put your hand to the screen, and we'll do that. What must you do to be saved? No one gets out of this world alive, so this is beyond a doubt the most important question you can ever ask yourself. In fact, the Bible was written so that you may know that you have eternal life. 1 John 5.13 First, according to scripture, you need to realize that you are a sinner. If you do not realize you are sinners, you will not recognize your need for a savior. The Bible says, We all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 Furthermore, you must repent of your sins. Repentance is an old English word that describes a willingness to turn from our sin toward Jesus Christ. It literally means a complete U-turn on the road of life, a change of heart and a change of mind. It means that you are willing to follow Jesus and to receive him as your Savior. And Lord Jesus said repent and believe the good news. Mark 1.15 Finally, to demonstrate true belief means to be willing to receive. To receive is to trust in and depend on Jesus Christ alone to be the Lord of our lives here and now and our Savior for all eternity. It takes more than knowledge, the devil knows about Jesus and trembles. It takes more than agreement that the knowledge we have is accurate, the devil agrees that Jesus is the Lord. What it takes is to trust in Jesus Christ alone for all eternity. The requirements for eternal life are based not on what you can do but on what Jesus Christ has done. He stands ready to exchange his perfection for your imperfection. According to Jesus Christ, those who realize they are sinners repent of their sins and receives him as Savior and Lord are born again. Regeneration, John 3 to 3, not physically but spiritually. The reality of salvation is not dependent on feelings but rather on the promise of our Savior who says I tell you the truth whoever hears my words and believes him who sent me has eternal life and shall not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. John 5.24 Once you are on the road of salvation, you must realize, there are two works of the Holy Ghost. 1. The indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Regeneration. 2. The infilling of the Holy Ghost. The empowering of the Holy Ghost. Baptism of the Holy Ghost. Moreover, speaking in tongues is the unique initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We must daily be filled with the Holy Ghost. For we are leaky vessels, you then need to be baptized, and learn the ABCs of the Hebrew faith. If you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I shall pray a salvation prayer for you. All you need to do is just repeat after me, repentance shall be necessary. Act 2 colon 38 Repentances and faith are inseparable experiences of grace. Repentance is his complete moral you turn on the road of life and being sorry for your sins and turning to God. Faith is the acceptance of Jesus Christ and a complete commitment of the whole self to him as Lord, King and Savior of your life. O oh dear, Almighty God, Master of the Universe, Father God I believe, I am a sinner, lost, 
spiritually dead condemned to Hades and hell. I have sinned against you, rebelled against you and your whole moral and civil law. I repent to you and ask you to completely forgive me of all my past, present and future sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Father I accept, believe and trust in the Lord Jesus Christos. I believe you sent your son Jesus Christ into this world through the virgin birth, to die on the cross to take my place to take away, completely, all my past, present, and future sins. I believe he died on the cross and rose again three days later. I believe he ascended to heaven to the throne and established the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the new kingdom of Israel and became Kaiser, Grand Duke of the heavens and earth and Grand Bishop of the soul and began his rule from the heavens and some day he shall judge the dead and living. I O oh God believe through the resurrection of Christ Jesus we are given eternal life. I believe Christ Jesus was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. O oh Heavenly Father I receive the resurrected life of Christ Jesus into my life. Father God I now ask that Jesus Christ would live his life in me and through me. I accept and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal and corporate Savior and Lord of my life. I now promise to serve him for my whole life and forever. In well, and baptize me with, in, and through the Holy Ghost. Lead me into all truth and give me the power to serve you for now on and to do what I must do. In the Lord Jesus Christ, I and we pray through the power of the Holy Ghost, O Holy Ghost, convict, convert, bring about reform, repentances, forgiveness of sin, restoration and renewal through my impenitent and the world's hearts. Dear Father God, I confess, believe and trust thee in the Westminster Confession of Faith, the Apostles' Confession and Creed found in one core. 15, 110, and the prophetic royal coat of arms ministry the reformed Pentecostal Anglo-Saxon and royal empire of the kingdom of God denomination. I believe, confess and trust that speaking in tongues is the unique initial evidences of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I confess, believe and trust. The world shall be slowly and gradually Christianized for a non-literal 1,000 years and the church shall rule with Christ in paradise and on earth and usher in a golden age of peace and prosperity at the same time for a non-literal 1,000 years. I confess and believe. The church, the elect made up of white and non-white peoples, the body and Christ the head, shall bind, bound and lock the devil into the bottomless pit. Slowly and gradually for the millennial period paradise lost shall become paradise restored. Then the problem of sin and death shall fully and finally be resolved. I believe trust and confess after the millennial. The devil is let loose, for a short period, then Christ returns destroys death and the flesh, and Satan is thrown into the lake of fire hell, and then the problem of sin and death is resolved. Then we put on immortality. Then, God's great white throne judgment for the unsaved and saved, then for good and bad deed rewards, then finally, the third, heaven age, and the third world age. The eternal state, I believe trust confess. The millennial is the complete resurrection of the world from the dead to life eternal. The millennial is the period between Christ's ascension to the throne and rule from the heavens and Christ's return. I believe, trust and confess most of the book of Revelation was fulfilled in the first three centuries. I believe and confess that the sons of Isaac, Saxons, the twelve tribes of Israel, the Hebrew people they that cross over the great river are descended from the eighth day creation. I believe and confess the man Adam and Eve is the first white man and the first white woman, by which the seed line of the Lord Jesus Christ shall come and crush Satan and redeem the whole world. In addition, bring peace and prosperity to the whole world. God created all the non-white peoples on the sixth day and said it was good then on the eighth day God created the first white man and the first white woman, Adam and Eve disobey God's command, rebelled against God, believe the lie of the serpent and actualize sin into existence. Then the world fell and died spiritually to the life of God through Adam. Through Christ the last, Adam the world shall be made alive and shall be resurrected to eternal life by the end of the millennia. I believe Eve had sex with the devil and Cain was born. 
and out of Cain's descendants are the Canaanites and all the descendants of Cain are Canaanites. I believe trust and confess under the old dispensation of the covenant of grace. Nations equals Gentiles descendants from the sixth day creation were the non-white peoples of the world. Then after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ's ascent to the throne and an establishment of the rule from the heavens, paradise, Christ begins to administrate the second dispensation of the covenant of grace through the indwelling, infilling and empowerment of the Holy Ghost. I believe Grand Duke, Grand Bishop Kaiser Jesus Christ and King Kaiser of the Kingdom of God and the Kingdom of Heaven and King of the Earth open the gospel to the whole world, and the barrier between Anglo-Saxon Israel, the white peoples, and the Gentiles, the nations, the non-white peoples, has been removed. Moreover, Christ bridged the gap and made the two one people. Under the new dispensation of the covenant of grace, nations and the descendants of Esau, Hagar, and the non-white peoples and the house of Israel scattered abroad are the Gentiles. I believe and confess. Israel under the old dispensation of the covenant of grace was the house of Israel and the house of Judah, the elect, united as one the church, in the old whom believed in Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. Then it split into two houses. Israel under the new dispensation of the covenant of grace is the house of Israel and the house of Judah, and the Gentiles who believe in Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior is the elect the church under the new the redeemed of humankind. Under the Old Testament Israel grew from 12 sons to 12 tribes to a theocratic government to a monarch to an empire then it split in two. It became the northern kingdom of Israel ten and a half tribes were assigned to it. In addition, two and a half of the tribes were assigned to the southern kingdom of Judah. Then they were destroyed and the kingdoms collapsed and all of them went into captivity. The northern kingdom collapsed first and went into Assyrian captivity 200 years before the southern kingdom went into captivity. After the house of Israel's captivity they ascended over the Caucasus mountains migrated, settled, established Europe, Great Britain, Canada and America, and that is where they are today whom were later called Caucasians. Then the southern kingdom collapsed with the last king of Judah Zedekiah. Jeremiah escaped with the daughters of Zedekiah to Egypt, one of the daughters' names was Scotia, who married and out of the ancestry came Scotland, the European monarchs and they mixed with the house of Israel. The house of Judah went into Babylonian captivity for seventy years then returned to the Holy Land rebuilt the temple and were there until the destruction of the temple and Jerusalem in 70 AD, and then were scattered throughout the world. God said to the twelve tribes if you obey me, you shall be blessed if you do not I shall scatter you throughout the world. The tribes were scattered throughout the world, because of their disobediences. During the millennial, the twelve tribes shall be scattered and regathered back to God into a new heavens and new earth where holiness and righteousness dwell. In addition, sin and death shall not and flesh shall not. In the first century, the kingdom of God was established, and at the close of the millennial, the new kingdom of Israel shall be fully established made up with the houses of Israel the Anglo-Saxon Hebrew Israelites, the multi-ethnic house of Judah, the Scottish and Irish house of Judah and the Gentiles united forever as one person for all eternity. Moreover, in the Lord Jesus Christ's name I pray through the power of the Holy Ghost, dear Heavenly Father I confess, trust and believe there are three world ages, three heaven ages. The world that was, the world that is, the world that shall come and three dispensations of the covenant of grace the Trinity has is and shall administrate all three dispensations of the covenant of grace. In Christ Jesus name, I pray and we pray through the power of the Holy Ghost. Dear God teach me what all this means in Christ. I believe and confess there shall be periods of progression for the church and periods of recession for the church the called out ones. Unfortunately, we shall lose some people to death Hades and hell. At the end of the millennial there shall be more saved, than lost. The church shall rise like a loaf of bread and the yeast it shall work itself all the way through the bread. In Jesus Christ's name we pray through the power of the Holy Ghost, I confess. Believe and trust this is historically correct and all the sciences confirm it and the light of creation confirms it, the moral law confirms it, and special revelation confirms it, predicted prophecy and the fulfillment of predictive prophecy. 
the rational, illogical and observation, deduction, induction, and deduced truth confirms it lastly it can be well documented, now let it, be confirmed in Christ Jesus I pray, I bind it, bound it in the heavens, and unleash it on earth through the power, of the Holy Ghost, grant me wisdom, knowledge and the fruits of the Holy Spirit I pray and ask Almighty Father God grant me the composure to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom and knowledge to know the difference living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as the pathway to peace, taking as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, that I may be reasonably happy full of joy, in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. In addition in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, through power of the Holy Ghost, through indwelling and infilling of the Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, Amen. So, some of you are asking, why, why is that prayer got to be so long? I, you know, I believe in a full confession because it is like supplement us, uh, giving God supplement, uh, supplements. Confessing sounds kind of like a statement of faith, too. Confession, believe in your heart, all that kind of stuff. And some of you are saying, well, I can't understand it really that well. Well, you will. If you let God do his work in you, he will. And so, anyways, you said that prayer, believe in your heart, you are now saved, born again. Receive eternal life. He's going to transform and change you. He's going to bless you. He's going to make you happy. Not in the sense of where we interpret happiness, but the way divine happiness is interpreted. So now what you got to do is get you, buy yourself a Bible. Get yourself a Bible. Start reading the book of John. Another thing I want you to do is to go on to my YouTube page, type my name in, scroll through the menu, find the sermons that I did, called, I think, to a certain extent, the ABCs of the Christian faith, part one, two, three, etc. Go through that, and then go get baptized. Make sure, you know, you find a good fellowship to be a part of, whether... The f uh, being a part of the fellowship of this, uh, the prophetic work of arms ministry or some other fellowship. But either way, that's important for you to get involved in that. Now save, you know, and so guys going to do some mighty works in your life. No. <clears throat> Baptism through fall. Immersion. And, you know, and as well, on my YouTube page, there's countless of sermons that you can go through to further edit, uh, to further your study in God's truth. Because it's important to know what we believe, why we believe, and how to do the work of ministry. Because God has a calling and a destiny for each and every one of us. Everyone. So I think the important thing about Psalm 81 is that it also takes some time to uh, just to chill out mellow out, relax, quiet reflection, to contemplate on the good things that God is doing in each and every one of us. I think that's an important part of the psalm. So, anyways, uh, 
have you been doing putting in have you been putting into practice any of these the teachings and lessons of this sermon if not well then you gotta make that right with God and only he knows your heart yeah so anyways many blessings if you think about it people getting saved people healed uh, we've been, God's really blessed, the Prophet Road Kid of Arms Ministry. Uh, one of the things we've been doing in this ministry is ordaining bishops, archbishops, evangelists, and deacons, and God's elect with, uh, With titles such as Duke, Archduke, Count, Vice Count, Baron, you know, Cedra. So reflecting and the reason why is reflecting these titles reflect uh, all the sort of like the new person you are in Christ elevated to noble status in life uh, we've been uh, ordaining God's elect with titles of baronet, baron, and knights, all representing people, sort of their new names in Christ, no longer in Adam, but in the, no longer in Adam, but in the last Adam, Christ Jesus elevated status to aristocracy, kingdom of priests, and so forth. Elevated heir to the aristocracy, an ambassador of God to spread the gospel of the good news and other churches at other places who take the tools that we have at the prophetic road of arms ministry and make a uh, Establish church, churches and other places. We also encourage people to carry on our traditions of, you know, ordaining people with uh, various titles of the royalty and aristocracy and uh, nobility, uh, the elevated noble status that we all have in Christ. So God's been blessing pretty abundantly. Well, and if you know any of you are listening to this message and you feel like you got a call to be a bishop or a archbishop or an evangelist or deacon, I encourage you to go to my YouTube page and download as many sermons as you can possibly can, and then go start your church. And I. And I hope and pray that you'll encourage, uh, carry on the tradition of uh, ordain, ordaining people and anointing people with various titles of nobility and so forth as a symbolic representation of the new man, the new person we are in Christ, and the old man gone, the new man established. I conclude with this. We gotta bring the sermon to conclu uh, conclusion. And I conclude with this. God bless. Liebe himmlische Vater, für den allmächtigen Gott wir beten. Heil dir in Victor's Krone, Herrscher des Vaterlands auf der Erde. Heil dir, Kaiser Jesus Christus. Fühlen Sie sich in den Thronglanz. Die hohen Ekstase in vollem Umfang. Deines Volkes Liebling sein. All dir, Kaiser Jesus Christus, weder Ross noch geritten Ritter, die hochaufragenden Höhe zu sichern.
Wo stehen die Prinzen? Liebe des Vaterlandes von der Wellen. Liebe des freien Mannes. Erstellen des Herrschers Thron. Wie Felsen am Meer. Heilige Flamme, Blut. Glühen und verfallen nicht. Für das Vaterland von der Wellen. Dann stehen wir alle. Heißen wir zu einem Mann und Gott. Kaiser Schrägstrich, Priest Schrägstrich, Prophet Schrägstrich, Mediator und Grand Bischof Jesus Christus, unser Heiland, ja wir kämpfen und bluten. Mit Ruhm und Reich. Handel und Wissenschaft. Fist mit Mut und Kraft. Ihr Chef empor. Krieger und Helden taten. Hier finden sie ihre Lorbeerblätter. Getreulich bewahrt. Auf deinen Thron. Immer weiter blühen. Unsere Fahne kann mutig Welle. Auf hoher See. Ha. Wie stolz und majestätisch, wirkt über Land und Meer, weit vom deutschen Adler und der Löwe von Judah, die Star auf David und die christliche Flagge, seine Flammen im Blick, sein Kaiser Wilhelm und Kaiser Jesus Christus, hier, beim Volkornament für viele ein Jahr, der Menschheit stolz, das Gefühl in den Thronglanz, die hohe Ekstase in vollem Umfang, deines Volkes Liebling sein, all dir, Kaiser. Priester und Propheten und Mittler Jesus Christus. Deutschland und die anglo sächsen jüdischen Universalreich Israel, Deutschland und Gottes Reich Minus. Vor allem Dinge. Über alles in der Welt. Wenn sie für Schutz und Verteidigung. Es steht immer brüderlich zusammen. Von dem Maß an der Meme. Von der Edge am Gürtel. Gedankenstrich. Deutschland, Deutschland und der Empire auf Israel vor allen Dingen. Über alles in der Welt. Deutsche Frauen und Gott wählen Frauen, Deutsch und Gottes auserwählten Loyalität. Deutscher Wein und der anglo sachsen jüdischen Reiches von Israel, Wein und deutsches Lied und der anglo sachsen jüdische Reich Israels Song. In der Welt behalten. Ihre schönen alten Glocken spielen. Und inspirieren uns zu edlen Taten. Während unseres Lebens. Gedankenstrich. Deutsche Frauen und Gottes gewählt, Frauen, Deutsch und die anglo sachsen jüdischen Universal Empire auf Israel Minus. Loyalität. Deutscher Wein und der Anglo-Sachsen jüdischen Universalreich Israel Wein und deutsches Lied der Anglo-Sachsen jüdischen Universalreich Israel Gottes Empire. Song. Einheit, Gerechtigkeit, Freiheit für die Deutsche und die auserwählten Vaterland. Wir bemühen uns alle zu diesem Zweck. Brüderlich und Sisterli mit Herz und Hand. Einheit, Gerechtigkeit und Freiheit. Ist das Versprechen des Glücks. Gedankenstrich, nun im Schein des Glücks. Blüte, Deutsch und der Auserwählten und die sehr Auserwählten des Vaterlandes. Der Schrei halt wie Donner das Geläut. Wir Abstürzwellen und Klang aus Stahl. Rein, rein, unseren Deutschen und der Welt uns die sehr rein, wählen. Wer wird unser Stream, Göttliche zu verteidigen? Der Auserwählten und sehr teures Vaterland wählen. Keine Angst dann sein. Teures Vaterland, Sister anglo sachsen jüdischen Universalreich Israel, keine Angst sein dein. Firma und Prüf steht die Uhr, die am Rhein. Firma und Prüf steht die Uhr, die am Rhein. Sie stehen, starke Hunderttausend. Ihr Land schnell zu rächen ist falsch. Mit kindlicher Liebe anschwellen ihre Busen. Sie ist das heilige Wahrzeichen gut bewachen. Wie wirft seine Augen zum Himmel ist blau. Von wo vergangene Helden heißt der Ansicht. Und eisern den als schwört. Wir Rhein und ich, bleiben beide Deutsch und die anglo sachsen jüdischen Universalreich Israel Gottes Reich. Weile bleibt immer noch ein Hauch von Leben. Während noch eine Faust ein Messer zeichnen kann. Eine Waffe abgefeuert noch mit einer Hand. Kein Feind wird dieser Reinsam stehen. Mein Herz oh. dieses Standes nicht überleben sollte. Du wirst nie in ausländische Hand fallen. Viel, wie ihre Gewässer ohne Ende. Haben sie wie anderen Helden Blut zu verbringen. Der Schwur erschallt, rollt auf die Welle. Die Banner fliegen hoch, stolz und mutig. Rein, rein. Die Deutschen und die anglo sachsen jüdischen universal empire ist heute sechste und achte Tag als Stellung. Nein. Wir alle werden stehen, die Linie zu halten. So führen sie uns ihre bewährten Kommandos. Nehmen sie mit Gott Vertrauen Schwert in die Hand. Hagel Wilhelm und Kaiser Jesus Christus sich mit dieser Brut. Unsere Schande, mit den Feinden Blut zurückzahlen. Und o Kaiser Jesus Christus, des Reiches von das Königreich von dem Himmel und Gott und König Jesus Christus der Welt, Long. Live das zweite Reich und Staub für einmal zum dritten Reich und Long Life, Kaiser Jesus Christus, der das Königreich von Gott und Himmel und King auf alte Werk, aus der Weitecken, der die Erde lassen, dieser Gebet werden so für Anglo-Sachsen, Hebräisch-Israeliten, 
und für die Mulzi erwachsen Haus Judah und für das gottische und irische Haus von Judah und die Nachkommen der sechste Tag griechischen du Heiden. Wir fragen und beten in der Name auf der Lord Jesus Christus, durch die Power des Heiligen Geistes Gott der Vater, Sohn und Heiligen Geist und den Namen des Herrn Jesus Christus zur Vergebung der Sünde. Amen.